18 months ago, I made a video where I tried to uh, inoculate my own uh, oak tree seedlings with black truffle or tuber melanosporum. Was I successful? Let's find out. Knowledge always pays. Yeah. You, yeah. Today we can find whether we can bring you the answer. This is Alexis. He'd be one of the world's leading professionals on mycorrhizal fungi. Whether melanosporum is here or not. Okay. At least you would know. And yeah. we can do that. Okay? Yeah. So it's better doing it so than not doing it. Better doing it than yeah. not doing yeah. it. Or you're just praying and waiting. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't sound very sad. The little seedlings down there. Yeah. So these are my trees down here. Now, unfortunately, I kind of neglected them. I made them. I neglected them. I threw them in the corner. I didn't water them sometimes. Uh, I didn't weed them. They're full of old grasses and that. But I just sort of kept them there sitting, slowly growing for about 18 months. Some of them look all right. Some of them have a bit of yellow discoloration in them. You can see it there. Uh, that would be from most likely the pH of the soil being too high and creating nutritional deficiencies or nutrient lockout. But what we're going to do is take a sample of these today. I've got five sitting here which we're going to sample. We're going to take these to uh, uh, Alexis, who runs a Myco Tree Supply in New Zealand, and he is going to throw the roots under a microscope, and we will definitively know if my attempts at inoculating these oak seedlings were successful. The little seedlings down there. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we we are going to test uh, what I call is detecting a target species. Yeah. You know when you inoculate a seedling, yeah. you inoculate with something precise, which is your target, which yeah. is you try to, to grow. Yeah. So because this fungi actually mostly live on the roots of trees, yeah. what we harvest is a fruit. You know, like a, a, a mushroom is a fruit. The main body of you know that the main yeah, body yeah. of a mushroom is a mycelium. Yeah. So this one I think you told me melanosporum, so that's our target. Yeah. So because Melanosporum mycorrhizae have unique characteristics, especially in New Zealand condition. Yep. I don't mention Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. If I find this characteristic on the roots, they can only be melanosporum. So we can detect the presence of melanosporum on the roots. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we call looking for the target, basically. Yeah. Cool. And to do that, we need two microscopes. Yep. First one is a dissecting microscope or yep. stereo microscope, which goes up to about 40 times the magnification. Yep. This allows you to look at all the roots, basically, of the root balls, detect the presence of mycorrhizae, because someone like me, we can already dis distinguish whether a root is just a root or if it's been colonized by a fungi, because they have special signs that I can show you. We, we call a mantle, a fungal mantle around the roots. It's swollen. Because uh, and of, that's what's yeah, on the wall up here, isn't it? These are example of, of yeah. uh, like, number, that's like Saffir cap mycorrhizae. Yeah, I've got... They're fleshy and orange. Yeah. I've, I've got the truffle book written by Ian yeah. Hall, which I've read. I've got, um, yeah, I've got a better even picture in, in the office, but yeah. anyway, so these are all the targets and you could bring me any plant with an edible fungus, whether it's a mushroom, not any, but the one I know, Yeah. and I could look for the microidea and tell you whether I find them or not, yeah. that's the idea. So in case of truffles, um, so you start with this, but often we need to look at finer detail that we can't quite look here. Yeah. So for that, we use a, what we call a compound microscope which is um, a microscope that can go in theory up to a thousand times, but here I don't have the lens. I have a lens that goes to 400 times, so it's 40 here, 10 times here, so it's 400. Yep. And you basically, you, you use a glass, microscope glass and a cover slip. You just squeeze your root that you think is a microidea that you want. Yep. And, and with that microscope, you can check finer details that will confirm that it is indeed the what you were, the one you were thinking. And it'll be so it's a double step microscope. And so it will be this one. This one here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's and those are the, those are the clubbed roots, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can see they are swollen. Yeah. This is a non mycorrhizal root. You see root hairs. There's oh, no yeah. mantle how here. That's yeah. pine. That's this one is uh, hazel, I think. Okay. So we don't see here a non mycorrhizal root. This is non mycorrhizal. This is the central root, but all these little lateral are mycorrhizal. They are clubbed. They are uh, thick. Yeah. If, if in me, someone like me see that in New Zealand condition, I know already it's melanosporum. Yeah. But I would still take one and do a test here just to make sure. Just to make sure. Yeah. yeah. And this one, these two this, here? These, this is saffron milk cap. Oh, is it? Radiata pine. Oh, it's quite yellow, isn't it? Yes. It can yeah. be bright yellow or orange. You have here a better example of the real color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a microscope of, yeah. Yeah. Photo make it a bit That's yellow. a saffron there, and isn't that's it? That's a mushroom, yeah. Yeah. But it's very orange. Yeah. And the other one here are uh, related species from China. Yeah. 
This one is uh, like the milk cap. Yes, Lactarius yeah. hatstake, which is a redder species, redder oh, milk. Yeah. yeah. And this one is called Vividus. It's yeah. a new species from, from China described like seven years ago. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, you you have uh, probably over 50 species of milk cap in the world, edible. Yeah, oh really? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's amazing. Some are blue. Like yeah, I think, I think the yeah, yeah, but yeah. The, even the blue mushroom, I think the, it's an oxidation it like of the latex. Indigo? Or? Indigo, or, yeah. 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 Uh, the mycorrhizae are actually orange as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's just that they oxidize in the air, the mushroom, and they become blue. And I've heard the Lactarius deliciosus isn't yeah. actually the tastiest one. Yes, it's a mistake done by Linus. Yeah. Because what happened is that he remembered the species from Sweden, yeah. where it was not that good and was maybe not delicious it was maybe even something different yeah but when he went to the south of france he probably have eaten the bloody milk cap which is lactarius sanguiflus yeah which is more fruity more tender and people there always eat the two mixed because deliciousness and sanguiflus grow kind of together yeah and they come sometimes connoisseurs prefer only sanguiflus others not but i think Linus maybe have tasted sanguiflus and when he went back, you know, at that time they were just starting to identify different creatures. Yeah. So he couldn't be bothered with fine differences. And he sees something that looks like so much the one he remember was so good. Yeah. So he called it Deliciosus. But yeah. it was like, a very close relative of Sangi Yeah. But, he... but both are interesting. It's, um, you know, and then taste and colors. I mean, everyone differs. But uh, it's a gorgeous mushroom. It's simple. It's great on the barbecue. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. I even had kids who love it because it's mild. Yeah. It's not like, you know, sometimes kids can be difficult with smelly things. <laughs> yeah. But that one is, it's more the texture, great on the barbecue, like yeah. a super vegetable. These wood balls are quite big, but no problem. So you're happy oh, with me uh, on doing it? Yeah, you just, yeah. you just, you yeah. do what you have to I'll do. Show, I'll show you what I need to do. Yeah. Now there might be roots from like weeds that I, I try, I'd weed oh, don't some worry. of them. I, I usually, yeah. we can tell under the microscope whether it's a, uh, uh, li um, woody roots or uh, herbaceous roots we can tell you know woody roots are often redder and, and thicker yeah so i would have to break the ball yeah completely you, you yeah. break it a bit because we we really want to look at at the engine <laughs> yeah so i tested this oil no ph pen it was about 7.7 .7. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I think 7.9 consider optimal. So. Oh right. You're not far oh, away. Oh cool. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was. No. I thought it was over eight. Uh, yeah, it's anywhere from 7.9 to 8.3. Yeah. But I've often read in literature that 7.9 is perfect. So. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I will even probably cut. Cut yeah, you just do what you have to do. Yeah. If you have to destroy Good. them, destroy them. Uh, no, what, the method I use is not destructive. Yeah. But in this case, of course, it's quite old. So, <laughs> yeah. so there's more root than usually we'll go um, containerized pine. So often if it's in a, um, a containerized pot, after a while, it's like a, it's like a block. So it's yeah. easier to check each side. Yeah. In your case, a bit different. So, but we'll, we'll manage. Yeah. So we usually start with the lowest magnification and I like starting from the collar, from the upper part, which has more chance to have mycorrhizae when it starts, and of course, yeah. so yeah. So now I'm just, what I call it scanning, just scanning the roots until I see something that looks like a mycorrhizae. So if it's a, a nursery seedling, usually you don't have to wash the roots because it's all, it's, you know, to minimize disturbance. Yeah. And the mycorrhizae looks like the photo you saw before in my office where directly from the seedlings, you didn't need to wash. But here there's, there's still a bit of soil attached and I haven't found any yet. So not looking promising for that one? Not so far, no. But let's, let's give it a bit of a clean and have a, another look. Yeah. What I see is the only roots, and if you pay attention, you will see also some root hairs. But I, I don't detect any swelling or yeah. any, uh, if you want to have a look, you can. I have a very fine pair of sweeter. I'm very careful with these because they're yeah. quite expensive. So I always protect them, but they are, they are very thin, so I can pick up a small tip. 
Oh yeah. These ones are more for me to hunt. Hold on other roots while I do that. <laughs> oh, it's like but, surgery, isn't it? Yeah, but that's. I better not do it with too much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I use low magnification, otherwise it's too hard. I actually got three or four together. Let's see. You see, we can see that. So always start with the lower magnification just to find your roots. And here they are. I'll let you have a look. And I'll show you some photo, but from what I see here it's just root. Oh yeah, wow. We should be seeing jigsaw and, and something a bit colored. And it's all just whitish and, and big root cells. Yeah. So there's no, no fungus here. And no microbial no, no. fungus. Yeah. So that just confirmed what, yeah. what we were thinking. Yeah. And the one that's a bit more uh, rust color is just an older root. Yeah. So there's tannins. Tannins. Yeah. Yeah. Deposit. Uh, on on this one, you can see three at the center. You will see three longer. I think they are young root hairs, like cells that start to go off the roots. Oh yeah. They are probably the, the kind of root hairs we were seeing. You see what I mean? Like yeah. kind of three longer cells. Yeah, you can. But that's very. That's still very big. Yeah. If you were looking at a high founder, the microscope. Yeah. It's fifty times smaller. It's really really thin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you move the focus with that left hand, you will see on a root that goes about run this way, you will see a lot of root hairs. And then you can look at all the roots and they are just not swollen enough. Yep. So I'm very confident there's nothing there. Okay. But, but have a look. Yeah. You we'll see what I mean. So after nearly two years of uh, having these trees here, we had a small sample tested for mycorrhizae activity uh, of the black truffle. Um, or tuber melanosporum, um, and Alec Alexis couldn't find any um, evidence of it on their roots, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I would have liked to have one maybe tree that had it, two, or even did all of them, but none of them did. So all of those trees are destined for the compost bin. Um, and if I want truffle trees, I will certainly go buy them um, from the company that Alexis works with to create um, truffle trees. He creates a number of truffle trees and he also creates the saffron milk tra cap tree uh, which you saw in the video, or you saw us talking about in the video. And I want to say a huge thanks to Alexis. Um, he would be New Zealand's first and foremost um, knowledge base or professional on uh, uh, mycorrhizal mushrooms. Uh, uh, he really knows this stuff. Um, when you go there and speak to him, you can, you can clearly see that he knows what he's talking about. So if you do want to use his services, I'm um, actually do get in touch.